a presidential historian and best-selling author. His latest book is Presidential Courage. Please welcome back to the program, Michael Beschloss. Michael! In your mind, what constitutes presidential courage? Well, it's when a president in history really put everything on the line. His presidency took a big risk to do something great for the country. Had that not happened, we wouldn't have civil rights. We wouldn't have won the Civil War. We might have even lost this country almost before it began. The first word that comes to my mind when I think of Michael Beschloss is facts. Maybe hashtag facts would be the way I would describe him. For those of us who love history, Michael Beschloss is a superstar. Since he was in diapers, I think, he's been thinking, studying, reading about the nature of the American experiment. He published his first book, I think, before he could drink. Each year, we at the Archives Foundation honor someone who's made a major contribution to our national heritage and our American experience. And no one has done more in that contribution than Michael Beschloss. So often we think of history as static, as frozen in time, and, and Michael helps us realize that that's not the case. In his books, he emphasizes the humanity of American presidents and foreign leaders and helps us understand them and why they made the decisions they made. There are very few historians who have spent as much time with primary materials as Michael has. To do this well requires a willingness to do the research, a fluidity of expression, and I would argue psychological insight, whether it's the Johnson tapes or doing that monumental work on presidents of war. Michael's historical analysis is based on archives. It's based on fact. It's total immersion. The masterpiece is are his two books on Lyndon Johnson. He spent years listening to Johnson's tapes, transcribing them, and then doing footnotes to put them in context. No one will ever write about Lyndon Johnson better. No one will ever write about Lyndon Johnson without using the material from Michael's books. What do you think his legacy is going to look like? Number one, the most important thing he did was preside over the end of the Cold War. I think very few other people could have done it. He created this relationship with Mikhail Gorbachev and said, if you do further things like take down the Berlin Wall, let Eastern Europe go, I will not exploit this and embarrass you, Mr. Gorbachev. Mm -hmm. And so he did. For almost any major event that happens in the United States, you can turn on TV and see Michael Beschloss. Michael will offer a, an opinion and it is based on the historian's analysis of how do we apply conscience to what's going on. Character is exactly what singles out the best of war presidents. Abraham Lincoln, for instance, when there were so many Americans being killed from the North, ordered a cemetery built near his summer house to make sure that he, he would see the coffins being lowered into graves. It, it was painful to him, but he didn't want to be separated from the consequences of these terrible decisions he was making. It's just, let me tell you about this guy. Let me explain how this moment we're in right now connects to this thing that happened 100 years ago. And I think for most people, that's just fascinating. When I began doing this, I thought I would be on Twitter for about a week because I thought there would be about three people who would be interested in looking at old pictures. And the amazing thing was that within a week, the number of followers really went up very steeply. And since then, I have found that there are a lot more people interested in history in America in general, and particularly our visual history, than I realized. Twitter, generally speaking, is terrible. I mean, it really is not good. But the great thing about Twitter are these little areas of expertise. And Michael is a big centerpiece of historian Twitter, right? People who you turn to, and really they come into your feed, who sort of in the moment explain something to you. His language is very basic and plain. He's very straightforward. It's very accessible. And in a platform that is just full of junk and also misinformation and sometimes disinformation, 
to have really knowledgeable sources sort of say, well, actually, let me give you some context. Well, actually, let me tell you what factually happened. Without that voice, we're doomed, I think, to this perpetual machinery of bouncing from headline to headline. Michael's great gift is that he explains the history behind those headlines. At the National Archives, our mission is to preserve and make available the records of the U.S. government for the life of the Republic. We do this so that people can learn about their history, they can hold their government accountable, and they can have the information they need to effectively participate in the civic process. It's just really special to be able to say, this is the place where we capture American history. And I love that we have always honored people who want to tell the story and bring this history, again, not to the public up here, but like to everybody. It's your history, right? It's, it's your history. You should understand it. One thing that really does occur to you when you study history is that America is tremendously resilient. And we go through times of hatred and rancor and conflict, but at least so far, we've always overcome that. History is the chronicle of the triumphs and the tragedies and the good days and the bad days of a people. Michael tells that story with grace and insight and a passion for keeping the experiment going. I know Michael personally, and the, there is a centeredness about him and a remarkable uh, fortitude and perseverance and, most importantly, a realization that history is in what goes on behind the scenes, quite frankly. If you're an historian or if you're a student of American history, you have to mainly be an optimist and look at more than two centuries of American history. We've been through wars, we've been through pandemics, we've had presidents before who have failed us. We've had economic crises, medical crises, all sorts of crises. But always in the end, our system prevails. We've got a, a wonderful system but it really depends on everyone making sure that they act energetically as citizens. One of the few things that unites this extremely diverse country is our history. And if increasingly Americans don't know much about it, we have less and less in common.